Plus, I thought Protoss was the A-move race. I don't think you can actually start a sentence with a plus sign and then having a statement that makes no sense. I think what happened here is that he accidentally removed the first part of the balance complaint form. Now, that doesn't show a great deal of intelligence and it only took me five seconds to realize that. So I have a feeling this is going to be a banger of an episode. Let's continue. I have more than 100 APM more than my opponent. I have 400 more MMR. I bounced back harder. Sure, I took some damage in return, but I gave as good as I got with my fast forge plus one adept attack. After the mess of the early game, he just sits on his bases and wait till he has ghosts and vikings to counter my army. In a straight up engage, Protoss just crumples. How could I play faster, be higher ranked and play the A move race and still lose? While my complaints might be a bit exaggerated, there is no doubt that is how it feels in the moment. And my frustrations are real. And yes, I watched the replay four times before sending it in to answer that ever looming question. All right, AS Conviction, a Protoss player from North America who is in Masters with 4.6K MMR last season. Now let's uh, hop into the game and answer the ever looming question. Are Ghost and Vikings imbalanced or does he suck? Before we get into the build orders and all that good jazz, I just want to talk about what he actually said there in his little form. He said, hey, I have 400 more MMR than my opponent, so I deserve to win. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, results that are gotten in the past are no guarantee for the future. Of course, often people with higher MMR have better skill as well. But if I'm analyzing a current game, either of myself or of someone else, I never for a second think about the MMR. I don't look at a Protoss versus Zerg that I played and then think to myself, oh, I'm 600 MMR better, I should have won that game. No, I see, okay, my Oracle movement is poor, that is why I lost the game, not, oh, I lost the game because of 500 less MMR. It just makes absolutely no sense. It's honestly kind of similar with APM. Once again, if you're a very high level player and you're very quick, you're very precise, that is generally a good thing. Um, if you really know what you're doing with that APM. But if you're just smashing your keyboard to get as many button clicks as possible, there really is no point. I'm pretty sure we could train uh, a gorilla or a chimpanzee to smash the keyboard at maybe six or 700 APM. And I could give him one of my accounts that probably is 1200 MMR higher than you are AS Conviction. That wouldn't necessarily mean that he is better. It just means that he smashes the keyboard faster and that he managed to secure my account by maybe threatening me with some fresh poop that he was gonna throw at me otherwise you never know i haven't communicated a whole lot with gorillas or chimpanzees in my life not quite sure how well mannered they are anyway let's take a look here what's actually going on so we see a double gas opener out of the terrain now that is interesting because double gas openers have become a lot more common in the protoss versus terran matchup from the terran side uh, it allows terran to put on early pressure being relatively safe uh, get a quick mind drop there's a lot of variation behind this as well so they can get a reactor a second reaper or you know just maybe even get a tech lab and do some weird marauder play maybe something gumiho would do I don't think this is a wall this one's supposed to be over here this one is supposed to be further to the right reaper's not gonna try it out though it's just gonna move in and moves in. you don't have a unit yet i'm not entirely sure why that is the case and you're rushing out of forge as well which also is fairly odd now i always say don't knock it till you rock it um, but i like to make an exception and that is with builds that have a forge before a real tech structure and uh, this i can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to see that again <laughs> I mean, specifically, you always got to look at the first... Whenever stuff like this happens, you always got to look at the first person of uh, of the person that messed up. Because he thinks he's safe. So he sees this maybe on the minimap, you know, he's looking at it. He's like, I'm good. Nothing to worry about. And here he still thinks he's good. And now he sees it in the bottom all of a sudden. He's like, oh, the Reaper? How did that happen? Yeah, it's fairly odd. He says, like, Reaper in my natural as well. This is... It's an unfortunate situation, what's going on over here? It's like, ah, this Reaper, how did that get in? Very unfortunate. Then he's gonna chase it away, he's gonna jump down again, obviously. Oh, if the Terran pays a little bit of attention. 
it's gonna be slightly upset. It's funny. It's a little bit like putting in uh, contact lenses or taking out contact lenses, actually, uh, with walls. Sometimes, you know, you, you have the motion of the two fingers. You squeeze. You think you have it. And there's like a moment of elation. Then you look at your fingers and it's empty and it's still stuck in your eye. It's the same with walls. Sometimes you think you build the perfect wall and then three reapers jump in and kill seven workers. Trust me, it's not a great moment. Um, this is a build order. Like I was saying, don't knock it till you rock it unless it's a fast forge. It's just one of the many rules that I have for myself. These type of build orders, they sound very good in theory. Fast upgrades, your units deal more damage. My adepts will be capable of two-shotting. But you simply have no cash for anything else if you rush out a forge this fast. And it takes really, really long as well to get the plus one going. This is also a god-awful defense. The funny thing here is, is that the Reaper and the Hellions would have attacked the, <laughs> the adept. There would have been no units to defend. And they actually would have been capable of dealing more damage. This is a little bit the, the empty fort uh, strategy, which basically, if you don't know what this is, um, I think the story is that uh, Zhu Liang, a Chinese uh, army commander, he had to defend a fort and he only had, uh, he only had 2,500 men or so, or 2,000 men defensively. And in front of the fort were like 100,000 soldiers of the opposing uh, army or whatever opposing tribe i don't know what it was so what he did is he opened the gates uh, and he grabbed like some special guitar like some chinese guitar and he started playing on some platform i think he also had two boys with him and he looked really relaxed and calm and the, the army commander on the other side saw that and i was like hey this guy is way too calm surely it is a trap if we go in there right now we're gonna get absolutely destroyed well in reality they just didn't have enough defenses and it was a major bluff the reason why this worked so well is because Zhu Liang was known to be a fantastic army a very competent commander that would never make such a huge strategical blunder the problem with AS conviction is is that so far he hasn't really looked to be a very competent leader or army commander so despite it semi working it didn't completely work he still lost a lot of workers um I mean, 10 workers against what was it three reapers four reapers and two hellions is a little bit much um, now he's gonna get maybe he's gonna go in no it's not gonna go no okay, well, prism dies cyclone dies as well this is a trade i honestly would be okay with if i was as conviction he doesn't know it but he's still up four ish workers uh, he's up way in supply because he honestly hasn't lost that many units his opponent has um there's triple cc already holy crap what is this build that's a really fast third cc honest to god it's rare to see that so yeah so far this forge has not really achieved much of anything defensively a forge is just so bad like i said if you it feels great to have very quick upgrades and theoretically it often makes sense but it's a huge investment that pays off so late in the game that against any type of early game shenanigans you're often just going to fall behind and yeah being equal in workers um, while your opponent has triple cc and you're still building your or your third base just barely finished that's usually not a very good thing double ebay's going down right now Benji on the way as well with Cloak. Let's not forget that our good friend Ace Conviction is completely unaware of the fact that there is Cloak right now, which could definitely be an issue. As uh, for Cloak, you need observers and you need to have units in position to deal with the Benji as well. Two Stalkers. One Stalker just dies. Even with two Stalkers, you know, kill a couple of workers. This is nice though. Like, this feels really good. You're two-shotting SCVs, which is obviously great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just not a very viable strategy usually let's not talk too much about that see what's happening on the other side okay cloak banshee is just idling right now if that would be going in that would be you know, big trouble in my mind but plenty of damage has been done prism is still alive as well which means he can go in once more now the banshee comes in and i don't think there's anything quite ready no observer did our good friend spot it did spot that something was researching here but honestly in the chaos of the moment i can kind of understand that you don't see it like he was busy shading he was busy microing busy doing things that basically weren't checking the tech lab whether it was green or not he's gonna kill a couple of scvs here anyway i still think this is a completely fine situation for the protoss player protoss is floating a lot of money uh, but once again a lot was happening here. I don't actually mind it so much if you float a lot, if a lot of things are happening. I mind it when you start floating money when nothing is happening. And right now, 
um, not much is happening anymore. So you need to send these workers back to mining. You need to start building gateways. I mean, you're floating 13, 1400 minerals. You have a crap ton of gas as well. Start an upgrade. Okay, plus two. One one's already done. Seven minutes and 30 seconds into the game, which is kind of cool. But yeah, it's really need extra production at this point. And at this point, there's no real excuse anymore. There's no way that cannons are more important than increasing your production at this point. It is super obvious to me. Production should be the absolute priority right now. And you also can't have the, you know, at first I gave you the excuse where I said, okay, it was chaos, you know, things went bad and, you know, you were a little bit stressed out. I understand that you delayed your gateways. But at this point, you're pretty much like the friend who stopped his toe three months ago and says he can't help you move because it still hurts. And, you know, he doesn't want to inflame the toe again or something. Or I don't know what toes do. Then when I heard it again. You know those people. They always have an excuse ready. You know, it hurts a bit here. A little bit of a headache. Headache lasts for like five weeks as well. No matter what date you suggest, they're never going to be capable of helping you move. That type of friend. That's you, AS Conviction. That is you. Okay, charge on the way. Gateways being thrown down. What is this? Six, seven, eight gateways. Nine gateways. That's good. More production. Then you can maybe afford, but I'm okay with that as well at this point. You're aware of your opponent moving out, despite your map vision being horrific, quite frankly. Guardian shield. Super battery can be activated. Uh, no, no energy for the super battery, which means this could be a pretty difficult fight actually to take. The only nice... That was not very smart, was it? I want to see that again. I'm sorry. We're just going to have to rewatch it. I, it's going to be a difficult fight to take, but you need to make a decision at some point, right? You either need to decide to fight the force field or to stay away from the fight. You can't do... 30% uh, of this, 30% of this, 30% of this, and then the leftover 10% is you just idling. It's simply not possible. You need to make a decision. If you're fighting here, you're most likely just going to be fighting. You throw down some force fields, you grab some units, you find in here. But what you can do is half fight and then start running away without actually kiting. Because you're just going to be losing a, a lot of units for no reason or just gaining a lot of damage, especially from the tank. For an origin. I actually think you could have won this fight given that you're up two upgrades and you still had a guardian shield to work with as well. At this point you have the super battery as well and the tank was shooting the entire way through. So it feels like you still took all the damage and you dealt non none of the damage during this. It's not gonna matter because you have plenty of units so you're still going to be capable of defending but this fight should have probably been fairly easy for you to win and all of this should have died and now well, that's not quite the case. I also don't understand why you keep warping in Stalkers, despite not having Blink, and Charge Lots being a way better uh, solution to the problem that this army posed to you. So, A, it makes no sense with the upgrades that you build, and B, it makes no sense because Charge or even just Zealots would have just been better than, than Stalkers in this situation. Even if you would have had Blink, it still would have been better to get zealots here but you didn't have blink and you still don't have blink this is extremely risky and also needlessly risky you still do not have blink which means if your opponent stims he's just gonna catch literally every single stalker this army is just going to outrun you you're lucky that he didn't continue chasing or split off half of his army you should have lost all five of these why would you be on the map at this point you just held it you know what your opponent Please tell me this vision was... Okay, you had the vision before. You see what is here. This makes absolutely no sense. This is like robbing the police station while the entire police force is there. And you see it. You see the police force sitting there. And you try to rob the speaker in their meeting. It's like... It makes absolutely no sense why you would do this. You had full vision... You know you have no blink. If you have blink, this is a fine move because you can escape. But you have no blink, you're just gonna get caught red-handed. You lose five stalkers for nothing. They're completely useless. Completely useless. Your follow-up tech is Templar Archives as well as a Robo Bay. Um, I much rather have you usually just focus on one of those initially because it's rather expensive to get both at the same time. 
Uh, the moment you warp in two Archons, you don't really have enough anymore to get your Thermal Lands and to get your Colossi going. And it's the same. If you get your Thermal Lands and a Colossi going, you can't really warp in uh, two Archons anymore. So usually you make a decision and once you get a higher gas count or your first few Colossi are out, you can transition into Archons or the other way around. Initially you start with Archons, then you transition into something. I'm going to make you a suggestion here. Um, and I don't want you to think of this as an offensive suggestion, but I think you should just not get Blink anymore or Stalkers because you use them like you think pro gamers use them. You know, you want to be active on the map. You've seen it. Y you know, you, you, you've seen it in like a pro match. You see heroes like, oh, I picked up like three Marines here. That's great. This is kind of like the do not try it at home when you were watching Jackass as a kid, you know? I'm just giving it to you. Just don't try it at home. Stick with the safe charge lots. They kind of micro themselves. Don't do any of the fancy stuff. Just, please. It really hasn't gone well. I think you've picked off three Marines. That's the thing that you copied from Hero. Very well done. Three Marines. And you've lost about 10 Stalkers for that. Uh, it's not a very efficient trade. So you can just stop it. You're, it's, there's no need, my friend. Okay? You've, you've shown enough already. It's time to sit down and let the, you know, let the people who know what they're doing do that type of move. Charizard Archon army. It's gonna do absolutely fine. It's a good A-moving army for you. Can't go too much wrong. Blink. Yeah, that's fine as well, you know. Just trying to catch up. I'm all for it. Half your army chasing two mines that aren't burrowed. Doesn't really matter. I like that you put the A-move army in the... What do you call these? In air quotes? Except you did it on paper, so it's actual quote. That's just called quotation marks, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you put the you put the A move army in quotation marks, but actually all you do is A move. Like you're not telling me that this colossi and the two zealots really wanted to go fight these two widow mines that were unburrowed. I just yeah, I just have my doubts personally. I just have my doubts. Ghosts are on the way. It's also kind of sick that you had one one at seven minutes, and now you're actually being surpassed in upgrades. You know, this is a... It's a marathon, not a sprint. So you got them very quick. I would have loved to see a second forge at some point, honestly. I think it's a very good call often for Toss to make a second forge. You still have a good army, though. You have an army that... It, like, this game, this position in the game is better for the Toss than it is for the Terran. Terran is on eight barracks, which is kind of big. A second starport on the way, which is also kind of big. 3-3 three, three starting and ghost are out which means that archons aren't going to be super useful anymore you probably need to start adding uh, well second forge second robotics faci facility start thinking of things like um, a prism disruptors that type of stuff is really something that you want I, okay i i know what this is yeah i i know what this is i absolutely know what this is you've read somewhere Oh, hold that thought, actually. This is an interesting fight. This is no, it's not an interesting, it's a terrible fight. This is an absolutely terrible fight. Holy crap. Now, let me explain to you what this was. These five adepts. You've read somewhere, or you realize by yourself, that if uh, adepts have upgrades, that they can two-shot SEVs. And this made you really happy. And now, you're just finding excuses to bring these adepts up in some way you know you want to get these adepts in there you want them to you know even if they're not good anymore at this point you much rather have zealots running by they deal way more damage you don't have to look at them which for you probably is quite good but you know that adepts you know they have this special property you're like the friend that has like one fact about the romans and whenever something slightly related to the Romans comes up, he'll try to bring up this fact, you know? And you'll be like, ah, oh, I went on a holiday to Italy. And then your friend goes, ah, Italy? Do you know that the Romans were there? And the Romans, you know, they had these aqueducts where they transported water with. They were the first to do that. And no matter what you do, he'll always find a way to bring up the aqueducts. And it's the same with you, with these adepts with plus one or plus two. You don't even have glaives on them. You build these adepts specifically because you know that it makes you kind of interesting, you know? It's kind of like your thing, your gimmick. It's a bad gimmick, though. I've seen better gimmicks than that. This is like a, the gimmick of uh, peeing yourself and the clock hits nine. It's like, you might find it interesting and funny, 
but the people around you probably just find it annoying to go out with you. So don't do it anymore. It's over, my friend. No more adept harassment. This is also why you made that fast forge. It's just for these adepts. I bet you play this will every game as well. It's pissing me off just thinking about it. Especially when it works. You probably watch the replay, feel so smug about it as well. <laughs> yeah, they two shot. <laughs> I hate adapts. You know, back in the day, adapts without upgrades would two shot SCVs and Marines. That was insanely broken. It's the first tournament in Legacy of the Void. Fun fact. Well, not a very fun fact if you were a Terran, but sometimes Terrans still wake up, you know, in the middle of the night, they're screaming, Adapts! 2016! Is another great fight? Then you know uh, that they're thinking about the adepts that two shot everything that they have, basically. At least in the early game. A three adept pressure could kill a Terran back then. <laughs> oh, the golden days. Yeah, you really need to add some disruptors at this point. Your opponent completely has your army countered. Huh. I wonder if you use one control group and do it poorly with the disruptors, or if you use two different control groups and use both of them poorly. I feel like it's one control group. The way that that disruptor moved was very unnatural. You really need a second robo at this point, by the way. Disruptors are an absolute must against uh, ghost viking armies. Like, you can't always keep the same army. This is a very primitive type of army that does great against armies that don't have ghost and don't have vikings. If there's either ghost or vikings, you need to transition out of this. If they only have Vikings, you can often make do with adding a couple of Archons. But if they have Ghost and Vikings, you need to get Disruptors or you're just going to get absolutely blasted. Especially given that you're still down an upgrade as well. So yeah, you're just gonna get destroyed. Like This is just kind of how StarCraft 2 works. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing that there's such a thing as unit counters. If there was no such thing as unit counters, you would literally never be capable of getting back into a game by tacking into something better or surviving to a superior tech. If you were to win the early game then, you would also win the mid game because your army would just be better always. It makes no sense. Why have different types of units then? Everyone should just get pure marines. That would not be very interesting or very fun. It's like playing chess but only having pawns. It would practically be checkers I guess. Checkers is a pretty mediocre game. I mean, I'm impressed that they managed to invent it so long ago, but it also shows that it's kind of crap. Checkers feels like it could be an American sport with how poorly designed it is, you know? Think of like baseball. It's like, how did they come up with that? Is it freaking American football? It's really not that all that interesting, is it? Uh, sorry, Americans. I'm sorry, baseball fans. I know, I, I go hard on you every now and again. Yeah, I mean, this game is fairly over at this point, at least I think so. You just lost one big engagement because you had an inferior army despite being ahead the entire game and in plenty of time, plenty of resources to get a better army. It, I always find it fairly difficult to say something too, too useful about this. Like, your early game wasn't great, your mid game wasn't great, there were lots of mistakes made, but despite all of your mistakes, you still were in an okay spot, and you were in an okay spot because you probably have a decent idea of what you need to do in general in the game. You know, building units, you had a lot of workers all the time, you expanded pretty quickly, didn't fall behind in upgrades. It's just, you kind of missed the final step in your army. Just disruptors. That's truly the only thing. You can also, you could have done it with a, a, actually a very uh, big... Uh, gateway colossi army but then you would have needed the micro and snipe the vikings and kite back and honestly i'm not gonna see it happening with, with the control that you've showcased so far this game um it's just mainly just it's mainly just been a moving even with disruptors that's why you lost most of your disruptors as well well how many did you actually build like two three okay because you a moved them after you shot the purification of uh yeah gg gets uh put out giant orange winds i you know I, I'm just gonna take another look at your imbalance complaint form because you complained about Ghost and Vikings, but these are actually just the straight up counters to the units, the tech bo the tech buildings that you build at like the eight minute mark. When I said I would not recommend throwing down a Robo Bay and a Templar Archives at the same time, um, that is the moment when you last kind of improved your tech. 
it feels like like you didn't go into air tolls you didn't go into carriers and you didn't go into disruptors and disruptors really is the first step it's a very basic step after two after three colossi you automatically go into disruptor of double robo you just have to there is no way for protos to win fights without that like you need a second type of aoe um archons are going to get destroyed by emp vikings are absolutely going to destroy colossi maybe you can do it if you build like eight nine immortals but disruptors are just better it's such a powerful unit and and you really need it i don't think that the terran late game army is imbalanced my friend i think it is you instead who sucks that's just the truth i'm sorry all right Whew, swarm here that's going to be it for me today thanks everyone for watching i hope you did enjoy it if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hopefully i'll see all of you next time for a new video um yeah bye bye